the eagerly anticipated release of Massive X witnesses a whole host of new features. And whilst users of the original Massive will be excited to dive in, they may also come across a few surprises. In this video, we'll be demonstrating some of the new features and changes that will ease your transition and workflow from the original Massive to Massive X. At the heart of Massive X are the wavetable oscillators. And although there's an included legacy section of wavetables featuring 15 of the iconic wavetables from the original synth, there's now a whole host of new categories and wavetables providing ideal sound sources whichever genre you're producing in. Any bolded text you see underlined on the synth is a menu. There are now 10 different primary oscillator modes, with up to 3 sub-modes for each one. These modes will control how the wavetable is read out, with each mode loading different controls for further tonal manipulation, thus massively expanding the sonic palette for each individual wavetable. And although there are now only two oscillators, compared to the three in the original synth, we've gained both a phase mod oscillator and a noise generator. And we can also add another three oscillators via the insert effects. The phase mod oscillators have been designed to modulate the wavetable oscillator or oscillators they're assigned to. Excellent for creating FM like tones. The routing section is now a lot more flexible, offering even more of a semi-modular architecture. However, programming sounds from the init preset will simply route your two oscillators through the effects and to the output. So you'll need to manually patch in components such as your filter, noise oscillator and insert effects. Taking this into account, Native Instruments have included a series of templates with different routing setups, although you could of course create and save your own. Double click on any connection to break it, and click and drag to patch in modules. To the left lies the input with outputs on the right. You'll see available inputs highlighted when you click and drag from the output. To connect the feedback, in order to route the signal back into itself for added saturation, you'll need to connect to the feedback input and then route to the output. This can become very creative as you experiment with different signal flows. You'll also see two mod components with which you can connect modulators in the routing section for example, patching in an audio rate LFO. There's now only one main filter in Massive X, featuring a series of new filter types, each one with its own additional menu, controls and distinctive character. However, you're still able to set up dual filters, either via the state variable parallel or serial options each providing a second filter or in the insert section you'll see a correction filter you can choose to route your main filter through this for a serial setup or route your oscillators through both for a parallel setup with three insert effects you can actually add even more filters into the chain for even more control for more fine-tuned control over gestures, whether on a parameter or numerical value, you now right-click or control-click and drag in the desired direction, useful for subtle movements or detuning oscillators slightly. And to move in octave increments, you now also use the right-click or control-click good for master pitch control, as well as for the individual oscillators and for pitch modulation, allowing you to efficiently set up arpeggios with the performer or plucks and percussive sounds using envelope modulation. 
and now there's also an included shortcut for quickly applying full modulation amount to a parameter. Once you've added the modulator, simply double click on the modulation slot. This brings us to the end of this short video, providing some tips and tricks for helping your workflow in the new Massive X. Make sure you're subscribed to the ADSR YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts for more forthcoming Massive X sound design videos.